One of the earliest memories was um, the East Tower in the Grand Canyon, where there's a mural that spirals all the way up these stairs. And, you know, in a way, that's kind of what the piece is doing in the, in the gallery over here. You kind of have a spiral movement while you were um, experiencing it. And it changes as you follow it around. This piece talks about several things, not not just you know nature and consumerism and and um, uh, illusions of reality. It, it's also kind of talking about um, there's a lot of philosophy and a lot of theory in it. Um, first of all, it, the most obvious thing about it is that it's a shadow lantern, and the history of shadow lantern dates far, far back. Ancient Egypt and India, Indonesia, China, um, I think the Buddhists use it in their ceremonies and it's really, uh, it's kind of a meditational tool. They use it for basically uh, sacred allegory and um, spiritual rituals. And, it, and it's basically because of the uh, movement to it. So it's, anything repetitive is kind of how you go into meditation, um, like chants and uh, drumming and all these different kinds of repetitive things. So repetitive movement is the same kind of idea. Ideas of object relations. Um, so W.D. Winnicott talked about object and other and this, this uh, transitional space and basically uh, I kind of create a transitional space where one walks through, and um, the, di the distance between language and light is really like that transitional space, so it's experiential space. Um, it's uh, kind of the bridge between inner and outer, and reality and illusion, and inside and outside reflection and action. It's kind of those back and forth, um, yin and yang kind of thing looking at this piece and, and it feels like you're looking at you know trees and nature and you're or it kind of looks like it could be a projection of a video um, once you get around to see what how it's created and what it is it's kind of a surprise it might not be the reality that you thought it was and that could be good or bad uh, but depending on the person viewing it I kind of like the whole shaking you up a little bit, the, the shock of what it is, what it appears to be, and what it actually is. Installation art creates uh, an experiential um, reality for the viewer. It's, it's, not, it's not something you just go look at. I mean, you can have an experience in your mind when you look at a two-dimensional piece, but you are actually involved with a piece there's a space to walk in and be part of it with installation art and that's kind of why I've been focused on that. I used to have this place at it, this little um, trail that I'd walk and um, I don't know how old I was, probably six or seven and I'd walk this trail to a hill and it was this open field and it was, it was on the top of the hill and on the bottom was this big um, lake and it, it was beautiful. And that's what I called it. I called it the beautiful place. In the world in general, I, I think that these spaces, these green spaces, and um, these spaces that are untouched by mankind are kind of dwindling. And it, it's giving me um, a feeling of needing to hold on to it. 